Yo guys and welcome back to another fast paced review video. This one on the Anioki A8 Pro Max. This bike advertises a 100 plus mile range on electric only, no pedal. So that's that's a pretty bold claim. However, you'll notice the, the most craziest feature about this bike is this 60 amp hour battery. It's huge, 48 volts at 60 amp hours. We'll do a quick tour of this bike and then go hit the trails, put that to the test, see what kind of range we get. You know, a lot of time we usually see around half the range. Uh, then at the end of this video, there will be assembly tips. I put this together last week. You know this this bike comes with front and rear fenders covering the 20 by 4 inch fat tires. You got hydraulic disc brakes with a, a great quality looking caliper, 180 millimeter discs by 3 millimeter thickness. Got a very large headlight, beefy front forks that I'd say are almost like a, a motorcycle style. In fact, overall looking at this bike, it does seem more like a little motorcycle because I mean look look at the seat. I gotta say I'm not a huge fan of it, but I haven't done a ride yet. I mean, it looks like you could almost squeeze two people on there, no problem. Uh, this bike is 100 pounds. It weighs an advertised weight of 101 pounds. However, they do advertise a 350 pound capacity, which is, uh, you know, a lot of e-bikes can't handle that kind of weight. Integrated rear tail light, seven speed Shimano, the seven speed shifter up here, pretty standard, a uh, thousand watt peak motor on the back so 48 volt at 1000 watts that thing's probably going to have a lot of juice and i think that's enough to to get going on this ride because it is supposed to rain today i'm going to just roll the dice worst case we do a water resistance test now on this battery i did fully charge it last night and you see if you press this it shows three green bars and one red bar it will fully juiced up to turn it on it can actually use this little remote oh, it, it does have an alarm too if i hit lock I think that means, it, yeah, if you start rolling it, it goes off, there's the alarm. So uh, to, to turn that off, you hit the unlock, okay, and to turn it on, actually I think you just press this once, now you press and hold the middle button, and that powers up the display, real nice LED display on there, LCD should I say, probably can't see it on the camera too much, but it does come on assist level 1 right now. So let's feel this. It's got a twist throttle. Oh yeah, this thing's got some some power. Uh, you do, you know, you're able to go in here and tweak all those settings. I will try to put some information up to that at the end if they have it on their website. But usually to get into the settings, you hold the plus and minus, and then yeah, you can get it through all your your P menu. Pretty pretty standard, easy to figure out stuff. Now, I was just messing around with the power button. It doesn't seem you can turn it on with that. I could be mistaken, but I think you have to use this guy to turn it on seems maybe you gotta press it twice and i couldn't turn it off with this either so i think you have to yeah just one press of the the unlock and it uh, it'll turn off you guys might notice a slight paint defect here too i, I didn't notice that when it came out of the box i think that kind of just happened from sitting over the last week no well, let's get this ride going this thing has got some power does 30 mile an hour no problem and on this ride we're going to try going river to river hopefully you can hear me all right we're going from the delaware river which we're crossing right now to the raritan taking the canal path and i think that's probably about 30 30 something miles that way we can try to outrun the rain a little bit because it's coming in from the west the brakes work excellent super responsive i mean hydraulic is just superior over cable when it comes to responsiveness of the brakes Going up a pretty good incline right now. You, you probably can't tell, but it's motoring up no problem. All right, we are jumping on the canal path here. And first thoughts on this bike, I'm really digging it. It has a ton of power. I mean, I'm riding on speed assist five the whole time, not doing really any pedaling, but I guess let's try out the, the pedal assist real quick. I'll run it down to get the plus and minus right here. Let's see how the walking feature is before we get going. Uh, let's see, uh, usually you, oh yeah, there it goes. Okay, it just took a minute to kick on. You hold down the minus and it's got the walking feature. You can usually adjust the speed at which they go as well. I ain't seen one like that yet. Yeah, man, just got it. Yes, yeah, 60 amp hour battery. It just looks crazy. Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like a motorcycle, is what it looks like. 
So in gear zero, pedal only. Let's see how this thing pedals. I mean, first gear, totally fine. Shifting good into second. Uh, third didn't didn't bang third. They'll probably have to do a little little tweaking on the derailleur. But yeah, I mean, once you get into the, the fourth or fifth gear, I mean, you're really if you're pedaling this with no motor, dead battery, hundred pound bike, you'll be holding probably 12, 13 miles an hour, unless you just you just really beat yourself up. However, if I kick it on assist one. Oh yeah, that, that takes all the pain away, baby. So it looks like just rotating the pedals. Uh, pedal assist one, 13 mile an hour. Let me see if I use throttle only. Uh, yeah, throttle only, same thing. It's, uh, it limits you at the 13 mile an hour, which that is usually adjustable in there too. You, you can, you can uh, make it so that even in assist one, it goes top speed. So assist two at 19 mile an hour. Assist three, 23 mile an hour. And again, it, all you gotta do is keep your, your pedals rotating. I mean, if you actually wanted to assist this right now, you'd be, you're losing your pedal authority. I mean, you, you're pretty much maxed out at, at uh, 20 mile an hour if you wanna assist the motor with pedaling. Probably keep it on speed one or two for that. Of course, you can always change that by putting a, a larger chain ring on the front sprocket there. Uh, so let's see, no hands, wow. This bike is really stable with no hands. Probably one of the most stable I've ever felt, actually. So a really good geometry. I don't know if the, if the weight's just helping that out, but always a nice feature. Anyway, so yeah, you, you put it on five, and again, if you, your hand gets tired, you don't want to use that, that twist throttle. You just keep your, your feet kind of rotating like that, and we're, we're doing max speed, baby. Indicating 32 mile an hour and on our GPS, 30 mile an hour. We'll keep that GPS going so we can see true mileage as well. Oh man, this thing just turns so good. Wow, it really is a mini motorcycle. And one of the best things about a day like this with storms in the area, you know, nobody else out here, it's just me. It's just me ripping. Guys, if this path was busy, you, you would not want to be doing 30 mile an hour. I mean, really things are just going to change so much with these e-bikes in the future. It, it's like the wild west right now, do what you want, but they're going to start enforcing uh, the, the laws once it takes it one accident, you know? The kids doing 30 mile an hour around people, hit somebody, not going to be good. And so far, people are really digging this bike too. I've already had three people say something to me about it, which usually never happens. Uh, it's 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 good looking, you know. It's hot stuff. Works good. I think it's always a good idea to add a bell as well, so you have both, because the bell is just much more friendly. You know, if somebody's in front of you, you sound like a jerk off. Suspension is working wonders on this. I mean, having those rear shocks, I thought they were kind of kind of weird looking, woo! Uh -huh. But they work well. well. Before I run this battery down completely, let's do a quick acceleration test, a power test. So if you kind of just hold the bike steady, it'll spin the tire, no problem sitting here with that weight on it. And then here we go, boom, does a quick burnout. And this is full takeoff, no pedal. Already at 15, 16, 18. I mean, it's just, it's a ripper compared to most e-bikes, guys. Oh, there's top speed. I mean, that's, that's not bad. Gosh, I just love how nobody else is out right now. It, it is a Monday, like 3 p.m. That's probably why, actually. Just think, donkeys used to pull giant barges down this towpath. Kind of cool, and now we're just ripping. Now we're going up a fairly steep slope, and this thing, as you can see, has no problem at all motoring up. We just rolled over to 10 miles on the odometer, showing 8.9 miles on GPS, so roughly 10%. Let's see how it does off-road. What the heck? Oh, I don't know what's under this grass. Okay. Oh, yeah. Man, that suspension. Woo! 
I also have the tires pretty soft right now too, uh, but it's it soaks it up good. Hopefully nothing big to hit under here. We're going to canal. This here is pretty cool. It's an old rotating railroad bridge. I mean, still an active bridge though, but I, I'm sure it doesn't rotate anymore. Check that out though. I don't know how well you can see that with the low light. Beautiful section of the canal here. Seems very deep off the bridge too. Uh, I guess that, that's proof that they used to bring stuff up and down this. I mean, and they needed the overhead. So they needed to be able to rotate the bridge. Now we're walking over a water bridge that crosses a lake. <laughs> kind of cool, the elevation difference is only like a foot and a half right now. But, uh... Practicing rowing out there, out there ripping. on the DNR canal. We're at number eight, Kingston. See, we started at Trenton. We're going all the way up to hopefully New Brunswick, at least South Boundbrook. In one of the last videos, we went down to Bordentown and you can also go all the way up to Bulls Island. I'd say we're almost halfway there and showing 18.6 miles, still five bars on the battery. Oh boy, it's gonna be a long day, long evening. Continuing on. drizzle and we've just dropped one bar. And we've made it to Bellenbrook and I'm sorry we were actually along the Raritan River probably five ten minutes ago. Uh, the millstone dumped into it. That's what was running along it for a while. And this is the Raritan, which uh, runs all the way out to the bay. You know, it turns into a pretty good boating river. Deep water boats and such up here. Of course, you'd... Sorry about the wind noise. It's getting, uh, getting quite, quite a bit windy out here. But you bring the airboat up here, you know. I'm going to cruise through Brown Brook here a little bit and then get going toward New Brunswick. We can keep taking that towpath. You hear uh, everything's been good except for... These, these brakes getting a little, uh, little noisy. And it's just a matter of cleaning up the pads, lubing things, no problem. I mean, it's like crazy to even see civilization. I've been on that path the whole time and it kind of just cuts, you know, slices through the backside of everything. right along Raritan. That's the point of these canals though, because the, the river is too shallow, you know, so traffic with barges up and down that would be insane. So they put the canal, you can control the water. Oh! Towpath closed for land at Landing Lane Bridge. Hmm. 
Well, I have to get around this because uh, yeah, there wasn't another road back for a while. Well, it looks like somebody's been taking a little path here. Maybe better turn back because I don't really see a good exit on that side. It's all fenced. You know, there's a lot of work that takes place to keep this all functional. It's uh, it's no no joke. Imagine building this but way back in the day. But it's really cool that they uh, they put the time in to, to make this work. Anyway, all right. So we got to backtrack and then get on the other side of this. That was a two mile stretch. We had to backtrack. If only I would have read that sign. Oh well. Let's try to get to the other side of Landing Road. And now we're getting rained on. I didn't factor for that two mile backtrack. We were really running from the rain there. Uh, well, canal looks closed here as well. No, oh, but looking at the map, that is where it ends. It dumps into the Raritan right here. That's the spillway we were walking across where it's closed. And again, it dumps in down there. So I'll just uh, fly the drone on over and we'll see what it looks like get a quick shot for you you know i mean i could probably get on the other side easily but with the rain moving in i want to get get into town somewhere soon spike's getting the water test for sure uh you see this is back home it's raining like crazy and there's no you know there's no avoiding that we're right on the edge of it Got chilly. George Siegel, Seagal, walking man. Good opportunity to demonstrate the lights. Single press, dims the screen, hits that on. Front looks pretty bright. Tail light, very bright. You see the brake light. That just gets brighter with the brakes. Beautiful here. I think we're pretty close to the train station. Here we go, New Brunswick station. There's the Amtrak. We still do have two bars, so I'm gonna have to run that down another day. I'm at 51.3 miles on the odometer and a true GPS mileage of 46.3. Oh, definitely a very impressive range. I mean, I bet you could make it just about back home, especially if I wasn't going, you know, speed five. I mean, when you're doing 30 mile an hour, it's, it's really pushing the bike quite a bit. All right, we'll say work is done for now, and uh, yeah, time to go get something to eat. I ended up finding the spot out of the rain to tie it up against this door, bacon business, and then uh, just set the alarm. There you go. I'm walk across here to this George Street Ale House, get some dinner and a beer. I don't, sorry. Yeah, the rain stopped. Beautiful out again. I suppose we could continue. Oh, it was nice for a second. Now the rain's moving back in. Just looked at the radar. I wonder if that's my train leaving right now. Let's try the walking feature up these steps. Come on, baby. Oh, it doesn't work out. See, the walking feature for the 100 pound bike, you know, going up steps really helps out. Probably should take him faster out though because, oh, struggling here. 100 pound bike. Yeah, it's like 102 pounds. Oh, we missed the train, so that's cool. Yeah, carrying the bike up these stairs. No bueno. That was uh, that was tough. You oh, know, right next to the stairs. What is this? Okay, yeah, just right up, right from the street. Next train, 25 minutes. Nine bucks. I think we'll go over in that parking garage and uh, keep putting some miles on this. Oh, wait a second. There's actually a parking garage right next to me here. I suppose it's not fair to be going up. So well, maybe we can find a flat area up top. 
And just do circles. <laughs> yeah. What? That's it? You can't get on the roof? Ah, oh, bummer. Pretty much a wipe going up and down because now we get to conserve all the, the battery going down. The rain has stopped. Lay some miles in on the streets. We got like 15 minutes. Well, watch, I'll miss the next rain too. That's me. Fifty six point seven miles. I was able to bang out some. Still at two bars. Change should be here soon now. Luckily, the train's not busy. Plenty of space. I gotta say, if it wasn't a platform station, coming up the steps would have been very tough. Actually, I don't, yeah, none of the NJ Transit stations have uh, the stairs anymore, I guess, because this doesn't even have the, the flip-ups like Sep SEPTA. And hopefully it's not raining when we get back to Trenton. Can lay down some more miles and break down those last two bars. Oh, I guess these trains aren't so waterproof. Get rain going over here. Thanks, you too, man. Don't forget to use the elevator if you have any heavy luggage. Escalator is no problem for the bike. Regular stairs, it's not good. And it looks like the rain is just past Trenton too. down to one bar just rolled over 70 miles and just kind of cruising around my town putting putting as many as i can on riding full throttle i mean he's keeping it pinned <laughs> gotta run the range down we could have made it all the way up to manhattan if it had rained i mean still holding full power this thing is 30 mile an hour one bar just ripping still ripping 75.5 miles wanted to show you on this other camera the headlight i mean pretty darn decent at night it's actually one of the best i've seen on an e-bike it's ripping all through the train yard trails here just rolled over 85 miles and finally starting to lose some power only doing about 15 mile an hour at the top speed on speed five and 87.2 miles she's basically pooched at this point and uh, we're doing five mile an hour, so we'll call that dead. However, you know, it's, it's not dead. Uh, technically, if we pedal assist to this, we could probably get several more miles out of it. Uh, wow. I am cold, tired, and whooped. That was a long ride. And as promised, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you some build tips. Uh, the way it comes packaged once you remove all the uh, padding and zip ties is what you're going to be looking at. At the seat, light, pedals tools, bars, wheel, fender. Pretty basic, but here are some tips. Start by putting the kickstand down and then kind of support the bike upright with your leg. Use the 17 millimeter to loosen these nuts and drop out this dummy axle. Pull the brake pad spacer out from the caliper and then spin both of the axle nuts pretty much all the way out. Make sure the uh, washer's on the outside too. And then make sure that the inner nuts are fully snug down, at least hand snug, and that you have even threads exposed on each side. You can shift these over if, if you don't have them even. But once you have it like that, you can lift up the front of the bike, slide it into place, making sure that the brake rotor goes in between the brake pads. And we can let it rest on the kickstand. When you put these nuts and washers on, just make sure that this axle is fully seated into the fork. Might be uh, before you snug it down, get up top and just make sure it's fully, fully in there. You want to run back and forth, snug those down evenly, good and tight. Uh, it's 15 millimeter, but I'm going to go ahead and grab a socket since you know the wrench is not the ideal tool for this. For the bars, remove this cap using the supplied five millimeter Allen. And then drop those into place, making sure your cables aren't all twisted up or anything. Uh, should just drop right down, I would assume. Might have to twist it back and forth and push down at the same time, but get it fully seated. 
and drop this cap back on tighten this down with that fully snugged you should still be able to rock the bars back and forth so make sure that those are dead center and then we tighten down these two five mil allens evenly however you can see one of them is missing so let me look in the box for that unfortunately i can't find the other one I'm thinking it must have rattled out of the bike and then slipped out of that hole definitely something you could just find at the hardware store or in my case i'll go over here to the m6 stainless bolts uh, it is stainless and i've got some marine grade here we go and that one's a touch short but i'll find one that's right as i was saying just make sure to snug these down back and forth evenly uh, at least three times back and forth and of course if you didn't have a bolt in stock again get it at a serious hardware if those still exist or home depot or uh you know message the company i'm sure they can just send you one m6 by one threads and we can drop our seat into place make sure the plastic insert is uh, in there oh you got that four mil supplied again with these clamps up and down back and forth tighten them all evenly there's no minimum insertion printed on here but you would think you want to have it down at least three inches into there thread your pedals on right side is standard thread left side reverse thread lefty tighty even has a little stickers for you uh, some guys like to grease these threads before putting them on too because of the dissimilar metals steel and aluminum sometimes they can get uh, corrosion there but in either case just make sure to snug them down real good with the 15 millimeter wrench at this point we're going to bolt the front fender and headlight on it sits up here has his little uh, stays one bolt goes through and plugs in. That's what the front fender and light should look like once bolted on. You do have some adjustability. You can loosen or tighten this four mil if it's too loose or too tight. And yep, that's, uh, th these threads were a little tight getting into the fork. I had to use some forward pressure on them, but no problems otherwise. At this point, make sure that the hydraulic brakes are nice and tight, give them a good pump. And then lift up each end of the bike separately, spin it, make sure that the rotor is not um, rubbing if it does happen to be binding or rubbing first thing to check is that your rotor is straight and not bent from shipping next thing would be loosen this five mil and this five mil because there is some uh, shifting back and forth wiggle room on this caliper uh, so once you, you loosen those you can grab the brakes a couple more times in fact i usually just hold the brake down and tighten these snug them and then you shouldn't have any more rubbing same goes for the rear other than filling the tires up, that should wrap up all the assembly tips. He's got a max PSI of 20. And I did notice this. So I, I broke off the uh, brake switch. And back to the future. We're in next morning after that long ride. Uh, I gotta say, I was pretty blown away. I think if we kept it on the speed assist two or three, we easily could have put down 100 miles. I was hitting hills and all sorts of stuff. So 80, 87 miles was very impressive. Uh, you see what came in the mail today, the brake light switch. I looked back on the footage and that was broken from the box, but easy, you know, quick thread in and simple plug and play. For the battery, I put it on charge last night with the eight amp charger. That's, that's pretty huge. And actually yeah, the fan came on and I got two red lights. Now, theoretically, with eight amps, it should probably take around eight hours or so, but I came out nine hours next morning and it was fully charged, although the one light does still stay red. For the battery, to take it out, well, let me show you the, the plug on the batteries over here. It's actually like a computer cord style plug. Kind of interesting, but you simply give that one twist and then remove your key immediately because as you can see with the, the bars, if that comes whipping around, that'll probably snap the key off or at least bend it. And so once you, you take the key out, and if you want to take this big heifer with you, I mean, wow, that, that has got some weight to it. Uh, but you can bring it in the house and charge it on the bike or off the bike. If you find yourself having to bring this upstairs, it's probably a good idea to just take that battery out because you save a lot of weight um, and then carry it up separately or in your backpack. But I mean, it is nice having the walk assist going up some stairs. I think with the wet tire though, it was just, uh, it was no good. Bring her back out in the sun so you can get one last good look. I did put that switch on and the cable management back in place. I really like how the cables are up front, super tight and, and well managed. 
One thing I'd like to see different on this bike is the fact that you need the remote to turn it on. Now, there might be a way to change that. However, I didn't look it up and there was no user manual in the box for this bike. I don't, that may have fell out the bottom or something too in the box, I'm not sure. Or sometimes they don't have the manuals ready for these bikes because it's, it's a new model, you know, it's, these are just hitting the market. Now, but this is really convenient and it's kind of cool having the alarm. Somebody starts to push your bike away or run away, you're gonna hear that immediately if you're close by. But then what happens if the battery goes dead in this? I don't know, there's some ups and downs with that. Now, the other downside was, you know, this seat is comfy for the ride, and I like that it's long, so if you had to slip somebody else on there, you probably could, not designed for that. However, pedal assisting it is, is a little tough. I mean, your legs are kind of rubbing on this, this wide part of the seat. And so if, if you're looking for a bike that you're gonna be pedaling hard all the time, this is probably not it. It's, it's more of like a, a dirt bike, motorcycle type of unit that you can kind of get away with taking on trails, not legal in all areas. So make sure to check your rules and be careful out there or be ready to, to break your wallet out for some tickets. Uh, but I had a darn blast on it and super blown away with that range as, as I think I've already said. You don't have to swap the batteries out. You can confidently hit the road, keep up with traffic and lay those miles out problem free. Hopefully I'm not missing too much in this video. I'll make sure to drop a link down below to their website in case you want to check out some more details and pricing. Uh, otherwise, thanks very much for tuning into the video. Appreciate you guys and see you in another video very soon, hopefully. All right, no nonsense, no how. Over out. What are you sniffing? <laughs>